welcome back to my channel. Today I have a kind of different kind of video. I was on YouTube the other day and I was looking at like room tours or something like that and I didn't realize that that was very anime. I didn't realize that plant tours were a thing. So I decided to do a plant tour. I want to say that I'm currently taking care of around 20 plants. I have around 15 in my bedroom alone but there are a couple other ones that I just are too big so I just move them out of my bedroom. I want to make sure that this is also educational, I guess. So if you want to skip to just the plant part, I'll put a timestamp onto um, when I just start talking about the plants that I actually have. But if you want to know about more boring stuff or maybe um, how to take care of your plants, then uh, watch the first part, which is this part. <laughs> this one is actually my oldest plant. This is a ZZ plant. And sorry, I had to change my camera settings. Played around with my camera settings a little bit, so I don't know if this is better or not. I let someone use my camera like a long time ago, like a year ago, and I think they like screwed up my settings. It's not you, Jen, it's someone else. <laughs> I don't, they're probably not gonna watch this video anyways, but I feel like they screwed up my camera settings. So I basically did like a reset of all of my settings, which was really annoying because I, okay, this is a tangent, sorry. Anyways, this is different camera settings is basically what I'm saying. All the information that I'm going to give out is based on the plants that I have. Something to keep in mind is that even though I have to sneeze, <coughs> sorry Sophia. Something to keep in mind is that when you have a plant, even though it is a variety of that plant and it's in within the same family, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to have the exact same attributes as that family. So if a particular plant falls into a family, but say another variant of it is super not cat safe, that doesn't mean all the other variants are also not super cat safe. So you just have to keep that in mind. When you're buying plants and they have like um, the little tags the little tags like this. Try to keep them if you can, especially when you're starting out and you don't know how to take care of plants that well. I'm a little bit under the weather, so sorry if I sound a little bit sniffly. Try to keep the little informational tags. Sometimes they'll have like the scientific name of it, so it won't just say like succulent. I'll say like what type of succulent it is. And also just to remember that plants are, you know, living things and you actually have to take care of them to make sure that they actually live. A couple of key things that I kind of just want to mention, I have some notes here. Obviously watering your plants. Try to stick with warm-ish water. Don't want to shock your plants. Certain things like soil and the types of soil that you have in your plant are kind of also important. I'm not super picky about my dirt, so if that's something that you want to get more into, you can look up like cactus dirt and stuff like that. It just has more fillers and also just if you want to do terrariums, you need to know what kind of sand. If you need charcoal, if you need a liner, there's more than just putting a dirt, putting a dirt, there's more than just putting dirt in a pot and then just assuming that the plant is gonna grow okay. Another thing is pot type. So one of the things that I want to talk about is what kind of pot you're using. So this particular pot actually is from, <laughs> it's heavy, it's from the dollar store. And most of my pots are either thrifted or from the dollar store and I usually just paint them to fit my aesthetic. If it is possible and you're just learning how to uh, take care of plants, I highly recommend getting those like terracotta those brown ceramic pots, you can probably go to like a thrift store and find a whole bunch of them for less than a dollar because people just donate them all the time, especially now that it's spring, there's probably a whole bunch. The reason why I suggest those is because it has the ability to wick away extra moisture and also because of drainage holes. If you are starting out, do not be like me and get pots that do not have drainage holes. Root rot is a thing, you can definitely overwater your plants very very easily. Um, another thing that I notice that people don't really take into consideration is when you are purchasing your plant, especially if you are purchasing- this is a huge stock, oh my god. If you are purchasing your plant in the winter time and even if you're not going that far away from the store to the to your car or whatever, cover your plant. Don't just run to your car thinking your plant is gonna be okay, especially if it's freezing out. Your plant can definitely die from the shock of the uh, temperature change. Even like super hardy plants, they can totally die just because of that. My battery is dying, of course. <laughs> One of the things also is watering and how much sun that your plant needs. 
Now, whenever you get a plant, it's always going to give you like a little care card that says like whether it's drought resistant, water it every week, every two weeks. I would take all of those with a grain of salt. And this is my reasoning why. The sun and the water that your plant gets is so dependent on how big the plant is, how far it is away from the, from the window, how much sun it's getting, if you live in an apartment, if you live in the basement, it's always going to be dependent on the plant itself. So whenever you are taking those care cards and you're like, oh, it says once a week, so you water it once a week, and then it still dies anyways. There's a whole bunch of factors into why that's a reason you probably still killed your plant. I feel like a very good indicator is to always just look at your plant. If you see that it's drooping, search up why is it drooping. If it's changing colors, look up why is it changing colors. Obviously, if you have your plant up against a window and you notice that the leaves start turning brown, maybe take it away from the window. <laughs> if you're watering your plant and you notice that the dirt never dries out, maybe see why the dirt isn't drying out, you're probably overwatering it. A really good indicator to see whether a huge icicle just like fell off of the roof. <laughs> a good indicator of how much sun your plant needs, just put it like kind of near a window for a little bit and you'll be kind of able to gauge whether it needs more sun or less sun. That's what I would recommend. And then for water, uh, like the best indicator is to actually just stick your finger in the dirt and see how dry it is down there. That sounded really gross. If you can go through the, like the top layers of the dirt, you can kind of tell whether it's still moist or not. Sorry, I might say moist a lot in this video. You'll notice that I also put a lot of rocks here on the top. It's also just to help maintain the, the uh, dampness of the soil. And if you are going to put rocks with your plants, just make sure that they're not water soluble. So I guess um, I want to talk about care now. So I do have a couple of things, care things. Obviously keep a water bottle or a um, watering can. I have this old wine bottle that is very dirty, so we're just gonna not look at it. And that's what I use. Usually if I fill that entire water bottle up and then use that to water all of my plants, I usually do it once a week. That's been like my watering schedule. I usually kind of gauge how much water each plant needs and then I will water accordingly. Another thing is you should probably have a spray bottle. So this one I actually got off of Amazon. This was before these got popularized. You can buy these pretty much anywhere now. But actually, I honestly, I honestly just use like a regular spray bottle more often than this. This is really just for aesthetic. But I do, it, it is functional. It's just that it kind of like leaks on the side here. So if you do get this one from Amazon, it is cheaper then if you just buy it from like a regular store, it is cheaper and it did come with a, it was a two pack. So this one is mine. Another thing is that you should probably also have a small towel that is designate, designated as like a plant one. And for certain plants you wanna go through and just like give them a wipe every once in a while. It will definitely help your plants. And like, I don't know if you can tell, but this already looks way better. And just like gently go with the damp towel, not sopping wet, and just clean your plants a little bit. And they'll look much better and they'll be much happier. The other two things that I have is a small paintbrush. And I would use this for more like succulents if I want to clean out any dirt in between the leaves or anything like that. That's what I would use. And then I also have this old tutti fruity spoon that I use to like move dirt around if I need to, if I don't want to touch it. Now one of the last things that I actually want to talk about, this is not water, this is actually isopropyl alcohol and I don't want to go too in depth into this right now, but I highly recommend having a small bottle of isopropyl, al isopropyl alcohol with you in your little plant care kit. And then also just some general tips that, I don't know, maybe Plants are one of those things where you actually have to do a bit of research about them and just to make sure that you actually know how to take care of them properly. So hopefully this is not too much information. But some of the other things that I want to talk about is just general tips. Make sure that you are rotating your plants if possible. A lot of the times I've gone into people's houses and I notice that a, like a plant is like severely leaning toward a window and it's probably because it's not getting enough light. You want to make sure that you're regularly rotating it. I would say maybe like every two weeks or so 
it's really dependent on the plant. You'll be able to tell if it starts to lean like really drastically. There's not enough light in there so it's gonna die. So those plants always make me sad because I know that they're gonna die and I'm just like no buy plants that are low light. There's tons of plants that are low light that you can totally get and they would still survive. One more thing, this is kind of more particular to succulents or any plants that are more susceptible to molding or rotting I guess. Make sure that when you're watering your plants you're watering the soil and not the plant itself. You shouldn't water the soil, don't water the plant. Water the soil, don't water the plant. Okay, hopefully that was not too much information. Let's talk about my plants now. So this is, like I said, a ZZ plant. It is also, the technical name is Zemilquas. People usually just call it a ZZ plant. And like I said earlier, I have this peony, uh, fake peonies that I put in here for like structural support. I just wanted it to like, you can definitely put like a bamboo skewer in there instead, but I had these laying around from an old display that I had for like my art shows and I didn't end up using it anymore so I just shoved it in here so I mean if it works it works. So like I said I do have a fair amount of plants so I'll try to go through them fairly quickly just give the main attributes of each plant. This is my oldest one so it's quite big, quite big. It's like up to here I think. Quite big. <laughs> I have two of these and the only things that I guess are important to know about uh, the ZZ plant is that they are not cat safe. They are not dog safe. They're actually very, very toxic. I'm not going to go into the technical aspect of the toxic scale of plants. Um, a lot of the times plants will say that it's super toxic or not super toxic. You just have to look up whether it's deadly or not pretty much. And even then, a lot of the times it's like, it'll say that a plant is super, super toxic, but it really just like induces vomiting if your cat eats it or something like that. So I will obviously let you know whether the plants that I have are not cat safe or not. A majority of my plants are either cat safe or not cat safe. However, Sophia doesn't really bite any of the plants that I have and she just, she just is never inclined to do so, so I haven't been worried about it. I do keep an eye on her about around my plants, so don't worry about that. <laughs> They're very, very easy to take care of. I usually water mine about once a week, just like a fair amount of water, and also they prefer moderate to like no sun, but they are tolerant to light conditions, so you can kind of put it up wherever and it'll probably be okay. <laughs> Get out of here. Okay, so the next plant that I have is a um, jade plant or jade tree. This one is also not super cat safe. I do have this in a really cute uh, metal planter that I got from also the dollar store. Yeah, I won't talk about this one too much other than it's not cat safe. They prefer moderate sun. The one thing about these is that they're very, 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 very easy to propagate. If any of the little leaves fall off, you can just stick it in dirt and it will it will root. I have one. I have a couple that are actually just like pieces that fell off and then I stuck it in the dirt and it started rooting. So they're very very easy to root. Propagate. Oh god. Okay, my next plants are these prayer plants. Oh shoot. My notes. I need my notes. Next up are my prayer plants, which are also I think the technical term is a Maranta lemon plant. So the only thing about these is I have two variants right here and they're super super pretty. I love them a lot actually and they would make really good hanging plants too because they... Ugh, I hate talking. I get out of breath so easily. <laughs> I really like these a lot. These ones you definitely have to water a little bit more frequently. I water these ones probably... I at least missed it fairly frequently. I check the dirt every two days or so by just like rubbing my hands across the top of the dirt and if I feel like that it's a little bit dry then I give it a good spray. They do prefer to have more um, damp soil but they're also very susceptible to root rot so you want to make sure that if it's possible put them in don't be like me and don't put them in pots that don't have drainage holes. Put it in a put it in a pot with drainage holes. Don't don't do as I do. <laughs> Just do what I say. <laughs> you can't even see it back there. If it's possible, put a humidifier on. I have a humidifier that I put on every once in a while and it just helps to keep the humidity up in the room. That was redundant. Here is a... Uh, I called this the wrong name in the video. I'm dubbing over it. This is this is what it's called. It's, it's this one. That is struggling a little bit. I think I definitely overwatered it. It needs a little bit more sun. I have it in this really, really cool soup bowl that I thrifted years ago 
and I thought it was really cool because I really like the shape. It's like kind of Grecian-y and then it has a lion head on here. So I always thought it looked really cool. These ones are actually relatively easy to maintain. You just want to make sure that you don't overwater them and they definitely get a lot more sun than this one is. <laughs> Okay, so the next plant that I have is a Gasteria. Gasteria? It's in the same family as the Haworthia. It is a succulent and it prefers drought like conditions. And my battery died. My battery died. See if it's gonna focus on my face a little bit better now. They are drought like, which means you just don't wanna water it like at all. And I would also not recommend that you mist it with a spray bottle or if you're going to have it in a location where it will evaporate very quickly. They're very susceptible to rotting. So you just wanna really make sure that you're not over watering it. And because it is, is a succulent, you might wanna look into um, cactus dirt or cactus soil. I'm gonna stop calling it dirt. <laughs> Cactus soil, it just has better um, nutrients, it's just better for the plant, basically. And it's also fine for cats. Um, it's not super deadly, I think. It might still be a little bit toxic, but I think the particular variant that I have is okay for cats, so. But it doesn't really matter. This one is also in like my little enclosed little greenhouse thing, so it's not like she can get to it anyways. This one is for people who kill everything. This one is a parlor palm, which I really, really like because it I don't know, it looks really tropical. <laughs> and here's another thing, this one is totally safe for cats. So funnily enough, this is also one of the only plants that Sophia actually tried to kind of bite into. I, I think I like yelled at her once and then she's never bit into it ever again. So this one I do have in a terracotta pot, but I just painted it white. And I also have a little dude here. My dad gave, gave him to me. He's a cool dude. So this one is actually a low light condition plant, which basically means that it doesn't want sun at all. Basically adapted to be a very good plant for like offices, basements, bathroom would probably be okay. Okay, this one has actually started sprouting another plant, and not plant, like um, stalk right in the middle. So this one, it's, it's a pretty slow grower, that's what I've noticed this one. They also don't require a lot of water. If it's possible, you want to let it fully dry between waterings and like I said, having it in a terracotta pot would make it super easy to make sure that you're not over watering it. <laughs> I pricked myself in the face with this plant at this moment and I just needed you to look at this. Here is my aloe vera plant. It is very very big. It used to be the size of like, like the size of your fist. And I don't really know what I did, it just started growing a lot. So this is also not cat safe, not dog safe. I know that it's really popular for people to use aloe vera gel for various topical purposes, for like burns and stuff. But if you are going to eat it or you are going to use your plant for topical purposes, I would just make sure that the plant that you're using is actually safe for consumption because a lot of aloe vera plants are actually not safe for consumption. You just want to be aware of that and just make sure that just don't eat it. Probably don't eat it. <laughs> if you're not sure, don't eat it. Don't lose it. That one's a very heavy baby. I had to put it down. <laughs> also, it prefers indirect light but I have been putting mine up near a window and it's been okay so that's what I mean like you never really know whether it's gonna be okay or not it hasn't burned at all so I think mine's okay if you put yours up near a window and it starts burning maybe move it away from the window which is kind of common sense <laughs> the big one so this one I actually got just recently and I am going to talk about a thing that I didn't talk about earlier so most of these are succulents here uh, the only one that I wanted to talk about actually is the string of pearls, which is right here. Here's the string of pearls. The string of pearls in particular are kind of cat safe. I think that they're pretty low on the toxicity scale. So I think if it's like if your cat eats one uh, pearl, it'll probably be fine. If it's munching on the entire thing, maybe move your cat away from this. <laughs> Another thing with succulents is that you just want to make sure that they get lots and lots and lots of light. There are succulents that are actually low light conditions, but you just have to look up which variants of it are low light. All of the ones that I have here are all pretty much, they need lots of bright light and not a lot of water. Things that I didn't touch upon earlier was this. This is isopropyl alcohol. Succulents are very susceptible to bugs. 
and like like meal bugs, I think that's what they're called. Whenever you get succulents, especially if you're getting them from like sketchy places, like like I got this one from Costco, it doesn't even have to be a sketchy place. It could be from like a reputable source. A lot of places aren't going to be super diligent on keeping track of every single plant that they get in. It is possible that they will get a shipment of plants that have a whole bunch of bugs on them. So just be aware of that also. That's where this comes in. <laughs> so this is isopropyl alcohol. Whenever you notice that there are a couple bugs that are starting to grow, starting to slowly crawl, I give them a couple sprays of this and they pretty much go away in like a day or two. So this is, this is really not a cure. This is kind of more like preventative in the middle. If you already, if it's already like full blown lots of bugs, you can try to spray it, but you're probably gonna have to still go and like physically pick out all of the bugs, which is kind of gross. So I noticed with this one, I think there were maybe like two bugs when I got this. And then I sprayed it with this and now they're gone. So the only reason why I don't really recommend it too much is that a lot of the times certain succulents will have powder on their leaves and the powder is actually meant to protect the succulent. The powder never comes back. If you ever rub it and your like fingerprint gets on it or whatever, the powder never comes back. To my knowledge, the powder only will come back if new leaves grow, pretty much. So if you notice like any succulents or any plants have like that kind of powdery texture, that's supposed to be there. It's supposed to help them. And obviously if it's dust, I would go through with like a paintbrush instead. You just get the real dust. Well, the dirt's out. Actually, no, I lied. There's one more. I bought it on a whim when I was at Ikea. So, <laughs> I found an app called My Garden Answers, and it's actually, you have to sign up like every single time before you use it, which is really annoying. But basically, you can just like take a photo of your plant and upload it, and it will give you like a directory of what plant it thinks it is. This has never been right. I have I have took a picture of this like three times now and it still tells me that it's either like a snake plant or like an aloe vera plant or like two other plants that is not what this plant is. If anybody knows what plant this is, like it looks like this. It has like the little stocky things here. Like it looks like that. And like I'm fairly certain that it is a succulent and I've been treating it like a succulent. But unfortunately, this is like so old that I don't even know. Yeah, I still have no idea what this is. So if anybody does know what this is, please let me know. So these are all of the plants that I am currently taking care of. So this concludes my plant tour. I tried this, I tried to end this video like three times. I do have a lot of plants. I want to say that I do know a little bit about how to take care of plants. If there is anything that you think I said wrong, please just let me know in the comments. I don't want to spread anything wrong, so if there is something that I said that it's super wrong, just correct me please. But then again, just make sure that you do your own information. If you want to, you can follow me on my Instagram and I post my plants on there too. So, okay. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!